and gentlemen, here we are at the Bitech, uh, well, that's a, no, it's a Bangkok International Trade and Exhibition Centre, or whatever, Bitech, um, for their latest motor show this year. And of course, with me today, uh, we've got Ian along. Yeah, yeah there he is. Um, I told him about it and he said he wanted to come and check it out, so we're going to go and look at some eye candy. <laughs> and first, we're going to find somewhere to eat, so stick around. Ah, so to kick off the day, we're going to do a bit of a stop in and get some food here. We're going, what are we going? We've got AW Restaurant, we've got Chester's, Authentic Thai Coffee, Boran. It's a bit more of a food you know, cash card counter. Looks like one of those um, cafeteria style things. The place I ate at last time, they don't have it open yet. Uh, I think this is the first or second day, of, no this is the first day I'm pretty sure, of the event. Maybe they're just a bit running a bit late, it is only 20 minutes past two. Yeah, here we are, we have the, um, the typical Thai um, uh, cafeteria style food. Uh, we'll take a wander around and see if there's anything that uh, captures our imagination and go and sit down and eat some food. What have we got there? Sweet mango, smoothies. Anyway, let's, let's just check it out. Well, I seem to have got myself sort of out. I got a um, chicken tagao, uh, not a chicken um, mutad, oh, gai tod, yeah, chicken, fried chicken. Um, and I think this one is a chicken, uh, green curry chicken uh, with rice and, and a tagao. So it should, uh, should be quite satisfying. 60 baht, can't be going wrong. And of course, I've got a bit of a beverage to go with that as well. That was over 60 baht. So I had them clean about all up. Yep, good for a good for a starter. Uh, Ian's still trying to grab his food. I don't know, it looks like he's going for a smorgasbord. <laughs> looks like he's just gone for a, a standard sort of boiled chicken with um, some sort of noodle soup. Uh, with another piece of, with, with a chicken soup as well. He's also just been knocked, nicked off for a beverage. So the interesting thing about the actual show this time, last time we were here, it was a 100 baht cover charge. Um, but uh, that cover charge has been wavered, so we're about to wander in and see what it's all about. Yeah, this looks like some sort of O-top sort of uh, presentation that's also on this sort of same uh, block of land. I think we've come in the wrong door. That'd be typical. Didn't read the sign. Let's make our way out there. I think we're in the wrong place. Okay, okay. No wonder it was free at the door because it's not the auto show. The auto show is where we walked in before. All the way down there. It was covering all these halls last time, but uh, maybe it's a smaller show this year. Who knows? Yep, so there it is. The Fast Auto Show Thailand 2019. Yep, this looks more like the place, but it's still pretty small. What have we got here? Harley? Mm -hmm. So here we are in Hall 6, which is one of the two halls. Now last year this was the section they put aside for um, pre-loved vehicles. And I'm guessing this is exactly what we've got again here, is all the pre-loved vehicles. Not the sort of thing I'm looking for. But let's have a look around anyway. I honestly feel that sometimes when you see the prices of these second-hand vehicles, I think people have got to be a little bit ridiculous. Uh, well, it's 359000 for a Suzuki. Uh, and it's done... Uh, so it's 559000 normally. I suppose that's not a bad price if you're looking for a vehicle. Um, I'm guessing 41,000 kilometres. So it's done a few miles, a few kilometres. So here we have the um, Honda Civic 1.8 EL model. Um, I think that's the model we were looking at a couple of years ago. It's a year older than, well, probably two years old from the one we were looking at. Uh, 769,000 baht, and it's got it's got 78,000 kilometres on it. It comes with a with a one year premium quality Panda approved warranty. It's also got all the nice uh, extra trim on it. Yeah, so I would be interested in actually taking a look further at that one there. Uh, but again, the biggest problem is the fact that they don't give me finance options on it, so I can't really sort of, you know, 
justifies bringing money out of Australia just to buy a car. And somebody's bringing in a car, wants to run us over. So the range that they've actually got here in second hand is more the elite style classed cars, Mercedes, BMW. That was the only Civic I could sort of see there. Um, saw a couple of Nissans, but uh, oh, here's some Toyota stuff. Well, they're sort of a, a Ford Tuner, uh, 4x4, it's a uh, 2015 model, 3 litre, 48,000 kilometres on the, on the dial. I'm guessing that's been rolled back. Um, but uh, 989,000, so it's almost, like, you know, less than half price, but you know, so it's, it's four years old. Doesn't look in bad condition. And here we have another um, Honda Civic, again, what Shonda was looking at. Uh, it's a, uh, what are they telling us? It's a 2017 model. I'm not seeing a speedometer reading. Or is that 9320? I really can't tell. It'd be helpful to use, be able for me to read more tie. Um, but 859,000, so that's only a couple of hundred thousand down from list price anyway for the EL model. I don't remember seeing that colour anywhere else. It was a special purchase buy originally. Sometimes I wonder where people get any idea that they're going to drive these cars around the place. Oh my god. Tire driving. Can't live with it, can't live without it. And here's again the, the Civic in the red, which is the colour we were looking for as well. well and they're still going to try and kill us here. Bad enough on the roads. Um, but yeah, so what have we got on that one there? It's a 2017 model. Um, again, it's the EL model, which is what we were looking at. And I said the list price when we were looking in 2017 uh, was 969,000. I could be wrong. It could have been 959, 969, or it could have been 989. A couple of years ago, I can't remember exactly. Uh, 20,000 kilometers on the clock. So. You know, that's, seriously, it's, it's two years old and they, they've got no reality. As we move down to this hall number seven, I think it is, um, I think we're getting into the new style cars now. <laughs> I don't even think we've got any bikes here today. I'll be really, really disappointed if we've got no bikes. So I was just saying to Ian there, like uh, telling a bit of story about finance. Um, as we've talked about before, it's pretty much pretty hard for somebody on a retirement uh, uh, visa to even get even considered for a financial option, uh, which prevents me from financing a car. It'd be the only way I'd be sort of you know considering buying or something. Um, this is why we're waiting for Shonda to be able to approve for finance herself, uh, which I will then help her with the loan. Um, but uh, I know there's a story I had uh, recently for just in a motorcycle purchase. Um, I was looking at buying, you know, well, I wasn't looking at buying, I was, somebody else was asking about a motorcycle. And so uh, we went through the numbers, um, that one wasn't, for, the one we was eyeing up wasn't for sale. I thought it might have been, uh, it might have been the right price, but then of course one of our friends turned around and says, oh no, no, I've got a friend of mine that's selling, selling his Vulcan uh, at a really good price and maybe I'll put you in touch with him. So she put me in touch with him. Uh, started the discussion um, and uh, he sort of said he only wants like 60,000 baht for it to take over the lease. I'm going, that's a bit on the shaky side of taking over somebody else's lease. Right? Uh, you know, it's, it's still going to be in, in the book still in their name because you can't actually transfer the green book until the car's fully paid for in a lease because the fact that the lease company owns the green book. And I'm going, yeah, it's a bit dodgy, but you know, like, uh, what's it going to cost to pay out? I see, he says he can't pay it out um, and because it's not his lease. So he's, this is a very Thai thing that you're going to have to be really, really, really careful of when you're looking at second hand vehicles. First thing, you make sure that you can see the Green Book before you even start the discussion. Um, green Book is like their certificate of registration. Um, in America, I think they call them pink slips, I think in Australia. We also refer to them as pink slips, but I think they're green now, but I could be completely wrong with the colour. Um, 
but uh, yeah, um, if you don't have that green books, look like all the best advice I can give you guys, run as fast away as you possibly can because it's more than likely going to be some sort of shonky deal going on. In this case, it was a motorcycle which was four years old. Uh, the person who was paying the lease for somebody or other else wanted 60,000 bar for you to take over that lease that he had. And even when I ran the numbers on the whole thing, it was going to work out just as, just the same to go and buy a bloody new bike. God almighty, they really just have got no clue about the fact that it's, this is second hand, guys. <laughs> you know, pay up, pay up, oh God. Anyway, just make sure you can get a green book in front of you before you start a discussion. Um, that's why new cars will tend to be a little bit more favourable uh, if you're a foreigner, you know, all those sort of trappings to deal with. Well, so we're sort of casually looking around here. There's a few pretty girls in blue dresses. Uh, MG. Now, this is a car that I'm actually looking at. Um, it's been catching my eye everywhere I want. Um, okay, so list price is 519000 5,000, oh, 50,000, what, year, years? I don't know what that means, 50,000 units, whatever that is. Um, but uh, 5 or 19,000 for this particular model is actually not too bad. Yep. I think I'm on the way up the camera. Um, it's, a, it's a right size, in my opinion, for uh, running around the local city. It's, it's narrow, um, you can seat five people fairly comfortably. Um, but as I said, you know, the amount of times we've got people in the car, we normally take the Fortuna. Nice dresses she's wearing too. And again, sort of the Mazda 2 is another model that I've been looking at in the past. Um, I don't know why she wants a Civic, but it's been a dream of hers. But again, 530,000 baht for an MG. Of course, once you start looking at optioning these things here, they, they tend to stack a bit of money on them. But, um, uh, 3.8 litres per 100 kilometres, it's a good fuel economy. Um, sports High Oil Plus. Yeah, it's, a, you know, it's got a nice look to it. Um, and again, I think for Thailand, around the city, these are ideal sizes to get in and out of traffic. Now that one there is 789,000 on the side window. Oh, that's the... Okay, that's the... XD High Plus L Sports, uh, but I think they start at 530. So this is where you, another thing you have to be trapped with is trying to get the right things for the right price and everything else. I'm trying to work out what there's on the front of the steering wheel. There's some sort of a heads-up display, is it? Have to check that out more. Uh, this one's the the, the Suzuki Ciaz. I'm not really familiar with this particular model, so. Let's see if we can see, get some sort of idea of pricing on this one. Okay, it looks like from this thing here, it's 675,000. Um, you know, what 14% means. So do we start to question what these numbers are? Are they giving you the X tax price? Yeah. Sometimes it really helps to be able to read more time. Well, this is what I've been sort of saying to Ian, is the fact that uh, you know, if you're going to do city driving, you want something small and compact. They're still fairly comfortable inside, uh, so between me and Sean, you know, that's a bit of a sort of a bit of a you know a sticking point at the moment. That's why I'm not ready to budge on my ideas of a car. And you know, if she wants to get the Civic, she's going to have to fight. She has to kind of work hard and get approved for the finance. Um, hopefully, in the next three years, we'll have it all sorted out. And no, we're not fighting. It's the fact that I just have an idea of what ideally would work around Bangkok and she has a completely different idea because in a Thai's mind, and this is just not showing you, this is everybody, um, the, the car is your prestige symbol. It's like you know, having the iPhone or you know, the Samsung Note or you know, the best dress or it's, it's what everybody notices. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter if you're in debt to your eyeballs, that's something that people don't see. Uh, it's all this, you know, keeping up with the Joneses bullshit, which I've been able to avoid for pretty much 20 to 30 years. And this wasn't even a bar about. Yeah, I might have bought the um, uh, the the Hyundai um, uh, Sports sedan, you know, just before, you know, three years before I left. 
Um, but you know, that's because of the fact that I'd eaten humble pie for so many other years, and I'd just given up smoking, so I was actually saving myself, even back then, $400 a month. So as a treat, <laughs> I went and bought myself a sports car to play around with. Um, uh, bought that, sold that, uh, I was only, only $10,000 out of pocket over the three years, so I really couldn't complain. But, uh, you know, this is what it comes down to. <laughs> I know where Shania's mind is with this whole thing. It's all about image, it's all about prestige. Um, but really, you know, sometimes it just comes down to how much you can afford, doesn't it? So here we are looking at the Hyundai EV. It's really the first time I've had a look underneath a bonnet in one of these sort of things here. You yeah. know, all we've got is, a, is a, um, a DC motor. It looks like a gearbox. Um, uh, give me something with spark plugs every day. But yeah, I'm just old school, I guess. But I have again my own opinions on the whole EV phenomena. Um, yes, I think they are lovely as long as the thing that's generating electricity is efficient and they're not using coal to actually make the electricity because, quite frankly, you know. If, if you're not using sort of renewable sources like solar and wind to charge these batteries, they they really they really are not um, anything to do with uh, saving the planet. Because uh, to make the uh, the, the lithium batteries, um, supposedly like that's equivalent to three years of a typical driving a petrol vehicle in emissions just to make the EV batteries. Uh, because you know, like people think it just it's just a battery, no, but the lithium comes out of the ground and <laughs> and you've seen those big trucks that they use to grade that shit, you know, and the amount of pollution that they, they, they generate, you know, with with, with the uh, with the mining process just to even get it out of the ground, um, people completely fail to realise the fact that to to, to get a, a a green neutral EV you have to own it for something like eight or nine years of regular running. And quite frankly, I don't think they're going to last eight or nine years. So all in all, uh, the show here is a little bit of a letdown. OK, it's free entry, but um, as, as Ian is just sort of saying, it's, it's really no better than going for... It looks like you lost the sticker. I've been, oh, <laughs> I've just been hit with another sticker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is... The, this is just like walking around an air-conditioned dealership. It's, uh, there's nothing really outstanding here. Um, it's again, you know, you, you have to ask the dealers a price and there's nothing really up there out, out in front as being anything special. Um, except for the fact that it's all in one place rather than going to individual dealerships around your local area. And quite frankly, you know, I've got that uh, Padam Song, which is uh, near us. Um, that's like Auto Alley. Uh, there's a there's hundred dealerships there. Here's a little bit of eye candy for you. But again, that's another disappointing thing about this particular show. There's only really the two showrooms, second hand and new cars, no bikes, and quite frankly, we're lacking a lot of eye candy. Oh, well, it's been an interesting afternoon outing, you know, uh, lunch and got to hang out with Ian and talk about a whole bunch of things again, as we usually do. Yeah. Um, but uh, as for the car show, a little bit of a letdown. Uh, nowhere near the size of last year. Uh, nowhere near um, the amount of eye candy they had last year. I think uh, if it's going to be the same next year, I won't, I'll be scrapped in the Biotech version. Um, I'll stick to the uh, stick to the impact center ones twice a year. Just before we're leaving, well, Miles, I'll give you a bit of our eye candy again before we go. <laughs> Black edition. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's the show for this year, for this well, for this month of June, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys next time. Bye for now. Say goodbye, Ian. Goodbye, Ian. God, this is a new thing, obviously. <laughs> See ya. I don't forget to hit that like, guys. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Um, by all means, leave your comments below. And most of all, share the video.